Okay, good morning, everybody. Time again for coffee and questions this morning. At least it's morning here. It's uh, before I go to work, so I thought we would throw up another quick video. I get a lot of questions sometimes where people say, hey, why do you keep uh, you know talking about tack welding things before you do full welds? Well, the reason why, if you don't, you run the risk that you're going to bring things out of shape and they're going to turn out not to be square, not to be nice and straight, plumb, you know, what have you. So you need to spend the time after you've squared it up and then tack weld, like I was telling you, like, you know, in the corners or every here and there and take your time and then do your welds. You're going to get much more success out of making the stuff run nice and true and straight. Let me throw up a few pictures. I'll show you some examples of what I mean. Give me just a sec. Okay, uh, way up above me is a piece of steel on a workbench. It's a little hard to see. I'm going to stretch it out. Here we go. Let's stretch it way out here. Okay, now let's take a close look at the end. And you can see this piece of steel starting to warp up. Now, I took this out of somebody else's video because they were describing a project they were working on. But this is what happens if you are too quick and you start welding long beads on things. As that heat expands it, and then when you stop, it starts to cool and it starts to contract, and you haven't tack welded those things like I told you, like in the corners, and then I go every, you know, I don't know, every inch or two, I put a little tack weld depending on the project. And then, after it cools down, I come back and I run the long bead. Now, that's what I do, and it'll keep things nice and square, and it'll keep them nice and true. But then the question is, okay, if I've warped the daylights out of it, you know, what am I going to do about it? Well, you can get that four and a half inch angle grinder out with a cutoff wheel and start cutting it off and try to rebend it and restraighten it, but it gets to be a pain. And I've had a couple of projects where I got in a rush. This is what happened. Truthfully, I just scrapped them out and started over. Let me throw up a picture and we'll have a discussion as we go forward on ways that you can do this and you'll get much more success out of it. Give me just a sec. Let's take a look at the picture over here on the left. Now, I use my clamps. I can buy these out at Harbor Freight. They're cheap. They work well. I use them a lot, and I don't care if I damage them or I mess them up or I cut them up and use them for specialty projects because they're inexpensive, but they do work well. So Harbor Freight doesn't always sell, like I say, always junk. But then I use this square, like he did in this picture, and I put this on my bench, and I tighten it down with those clamps, and then I square up my edge, and I make sure that that's a true edge right there. It's a nice 90 degree. And then I'll check the inside of this project here on the table, like he did on the right, and I'll make sure that it's square. So the picture on the right shows squaring the inside of what you're gonna weld. The picture on the left is showing the outside. If you do this first before you tack weld, you're gonna be much more successful. Then I tack weld in each one of these corners, and I let it cool down, and I keep it like that. I check the squareness again, even after I've tack welded. Then I might add some more little tack welds in the middle of this steel. I let it all cool down, and then I sit there and I run my solid beads, and I finish out my welds. Now, that's what I do. I've gotten to be much more successful at keeping things square by doing that. It's like establishing your own protocol for things. And once you do this in repetition, it becomes automatic each time you go to do another project. And I always do a little bit of weld prepping, especially on dirty steel, of course. But the purpose of this is to show you squaring methods. Give me a sec. Let me throw up a couple other pictures, and I'll, uh, and I'll show you a couple more things. Okay, now let's take a look here on the left in these two pictures. And here you can see I'm using those clamps again, or he did. I'm just, this is, he does what I do. Let me put it like that. And his pictures were better, so I used his. He was working on a specific project he was showing you and the end result. I'm not doing that. I'm just using the pictures to show you the welding technique here. Now look over here on the left. He's clamped this to the bench like we did in the first picture. He's lining everything up. He's making sure it stays square. Now he's using these clamps and he bought those out at Harbor Freight just like I told you I did. You can do the same thing. You can use vice grips. You can use other methods, but these are wonderful clamps for doing these kind of projects. Now let's look over on the right. Now on the right, you can see he tack welds just like I do, just like I'm explaining to you that you need to do to keep this thing square, straight, and looking good. And he puts them in all the corners, let it cool down some. It doesn't have to cool off totally. Then you might want to put a little one in the middle of each one of these tack welds let it cool down a little bit and then run your beads like i said i know i'm repeating myself but this is giving you a visual on exactly how to do this it will come out perfect 
if you've squared the inside, you've squared the outside, and you've done exactly what I'm saying. And then learn to get in a pattern of doing this over and over with these projects, and your projects will come out very nice, very square, looking good. Let me throw up a couple more. We'll go to questions and answers in just a sec. Okay, let's take a look at the one above me here. And you say, okay, well, what's he doing? Now, he's creating a brace in the middle of his project. Let's say he's making a tabletop. I don't know what he was making. I forgot. But he did the sides, and he's got it. He's got, like, his frame all done. And now he's putting this piece in the middle. You can see where he used, like, a four-and-a-half-inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel. He cut these notches. He set it in there. Now he's doing the same thing. Look over on the right in the picture, he's tack welding. Okay, so he tack welds this in, he uses a square, he makes sure it's nice and true and it's nice and square, and he might go ahead and add a couple more welds over in between things, but then he's gonna run his weld bead all the way down, all the way across, and he's going to tighten this thing up. It's a picture showing you the same thing, just with a different piece of steel involved as a support. Okay, let's take a look at the one on the left. Now let's say you finished welding it, okay, and you're done, and you go, that's nice. Well, let's check one more time. So I do what he does too, I use a tape measure, and I measure my length and my width, you know, on each end, and I make sure that I've actually welded this thing nice and square. So this is like another way of checking your squareness and checking to make sure that you welded this thing up correctly. So yes, you can use a tape measure, you can do that. Let's look on the right. So what do we do towards the end? Well, we clean up our welds. Now he's using his four and a half inch angle grinder or five inch over here, and he has a flap wheel on there with an abrasive pad. I don't know what grid it is. It's probably 60 or 80. He's taking these welds down so that it comes out nice and flat because of something he's putting over the top of it. This is one of the final steps, of course, you're cleaning up your welds. Okay, let me throw up a couple other pictures and we'll go to questions and answers. Okay, let's take a look at this picture over here on the right. This is just another way you can hold steel in place while you weld it. He grabbed a couple of wood blocks that was able to support the small triangular piece of the shelf or whatever, and he's gonna put it on this big vertical piece, this larger vertical piece. And so how do you do that and how you hold it in place? Well, you can do it this way with some wood blocks and that will keep the spacing between the bottom and the top like exact. You can also use a clamp, I understand. In this case, you use these wood blocks. So it depends on what you have laying around your shop. But you can do that, okay? And so like I said, he was working on a particular project. I just took and copied just the picture because I thought it's a good idea. I've done it before. People get paranoid about using wood when it comes to steel and welding, it's just if you're careful about what you're doing, yeah, you're going to burn the scrap wood here and there, but scrap wood can come in handy for a lot of different ideas on like helping you to weld certain things, including corners, you know, and different ideas, just different projects, whatever you want to do here. Okay, questions and answers. Okay, I, well, I'm not sure I understand your question totally, but you can weld these with oxyacetylene, TIG, MIG. You know, this is your choice. These are just, like I said, they're, these are ways to show you how to weld, but I'm just showing you how to not to warp the hell out of things when, you know, you're welding because I've done it. I've also taken these shortcut methods and I've screwed it up. So you're going to have people that sit there and tell you how great they are at welding and hey, and all this other, it's crap, okay? There are times they fail, but we don't want to talk about our failures. We want to talk about our successes. What I tell people to do is when you're working on a project, whatever it is, it, it could be on my lathe when I'm turning wood, it could be on anything, and something goes wrong, stop what you're doing. It's easy to get angry, throw it to the side and get frustrated. But another way is to sit and look at it and think what went wrong here? What did I not do? What should I have done? And I mean, and think about it change your process or your protocol or whatever you're doing, just change it. Okay, and let's come back at it again. So you might have to cut the welds off. I don't know, it depends on what the screw up was. But analyze it, okay? Try not to get upset, analyze the heck out of it. Think of how you can reapproach this in a different way and do it again. And this is how you begin to get better and this is how you begin to succeed at these projects. You can't be afraid of failing, I guess is what I'm saying. You just have to look at it. It's an opportunity to learn stop and think about it anyway i don't want to rattle next question um flat steel warps the easiest uh well like cold rolled one inch you know one eighth i, I don't know yeah it can do that but then my advice to you is to keep it 
from not warping is just to do more spot welds and then worry about coming back and having fun with that continuous nice little dime shaped you know bead and make things look pretty and perfect the more you do this the more you practice the better you're going to get at it okay comment i have a cheap harbor freight you know little buzz box welder i can't seem to get the hang the hang of, of welding correctly Oh, uh, wow. Okay, look, I don't want to criticize anything that anybody does. I've seen people with these small buzz boxes and enough practice. They seem to do real well as a hobbyist or for those intermittent welding. Um, I had one. I mean, to be truthful with you, I used to think I was a horrible welder. I didn't really know what I was doing. I'm just, I'm just crappy at it. Then I had a friend go, hey, um, he had a shop. He said, look, come on over here. Let me try something for you. Okay. He goes, well, what I want to try is I want you to use my welder. And he had a really nice name brand welder and I went ahead and I tried it and he gave me just a couple of quick tips and I kept playing around while I was there at his shop and I thought, wow, I'm not, I'm not that crappy. I just have a crappy welder. It served its purpose for me. I was repairing little trailer parts and doing things and it worked okay. So I'm not going to cut down anybody that has one of the cheap welders, but I, what I can tell you is once I stepped up my game and I have now the Millermatic 211. I mean, you know, I can make great welds. It wasn't a cheap machine, but it's one of my favorite tools. I really like it. And so if you start doing more and more projects, then I would encourage you to look on Craigslist, look around, and then up your game and get a better welder. That will improve your welding, I mean, radically. But if that's what you have and you're intermittent, then don't sweat it. Maybe you don't want to spend the money. Okay, there's one last question in the video. It relates, but it doesn't. I was talking about warping and how to prevent it, but somebody threw in a question in the questions and answers going, you know, it's a pain in the butt to do metal tabs and make them like, you know, one at a time and have to make a bunch of them. Okay, well, don't do them one at a time, okay? That's my answer to you. Take a look at the picture up here on the left. Um, I took this off of the web. Again, it's not mine, but I do it the same way. I take a piece of blue tape, duct tape, whatever you have, tape your pieces of metal together like in a big thick stack, I put them into my machinist vise. I line up my drill press of the hole I'm going to drill. I take my time. I drill down through them. Now, these are all nice and tightly kept together. The tape holds them together. I drill a hole all the way on down. I go ahead and I take it out and knock off the burrs on the tops and the bottoms. Take a look on the picture on the upper right. There are my tabs. Okay, now these are fast and easy to do that way. No, I wouldn't do them one at a time. You're putting, you're, you're putting way too much work into something that you could do much quickly. I'm not criticizing what you're doing. If it works for you, I think that's great. I do them in a stack, okay? And then I turn around and I throw them into like I have a box on my welding cart because sometimes I make like a whole bunch of these because I use them for different things. And this way I have uh, my metal tabs and I have them. I'm ahead of the game is what I'm saying. I have extras I've already made up. They're in the box. I reach over, I grab them, I use them for my projects. And you're able to keep that momentum going without stopping and going, oh, look, I got to go make five tabs. I'm going to do them one at a time. Plus, I got to round off the corners. I got to knock off the burrs. I got to clean the metal and all this stuff. Put them in a stack, wrap them with tape. That's your tip, okay? I hope that answers your question. Okay, look, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this video. I want you folks to have a good day. I'm still chasing the numbers. If you haven't subscribed and you'd like to, please do so. Drop me a comment if there's something else that I missed or you want to talk about in more detail or you've got a better way. You folks have a good day. I'm going to see you on the next video. And thank you very, very much for watching. Have a good day. Bye-bye.